A good tevach. In today's halacha, we're going to discuss the interesting scenario that occurs with Bnei Eretz Yisrael, including those tourists visiting Eretz Yisrael, those here for yeshiva, those here for seminary, where one travels to or from Jerusalem. The traveling to or from Jerusalem, as we know, keeps, keeps a different day of Purim than the rest of the world in Yerushalayim. They keep Purim on the 15th, with this, which in this year is on Thursday night, Friday, while in the rest of the world we keep Purim on Wednesday night, Thursday, Yudalot. So in this interesting scenario of travel, it could happen that one becomes halachically obligated to keep two days of Purim, the 14th and the 15th. It could happen that if a person is not careful, he actually circumvents Purim and loses an obligation of either the 14th or the 15th. It could happen that a person who's a Jerusalem resident really has to celebrate Purim on the 14th and not the 15th. And it could happen that a person that is a resident of outside Jerusalem would have to celebrate Purim on the 15th like Jerusalem and not on the 14th like the place of his residency. So we're going to explain and elaborate and clarify which cases enter a person into these issues. The most common case we'll discuss with those outside of Jerusalem. Those outside of Jerusalem that celebrate Purim on the 14th and remained in their cities on the 14th and celebrated Purim or Megillah, etc. And then decided to travel on the 14th, just as on meaning this Thursday, they decided to travel to Yerushalayim in order to also benefit from the Purim celebration in Jerusalem that will be occurring Thursday night. Then if that person who traveled had intent to remain in Jerusalem until the next morning, past Aloy Sashachar, then L'Chumrah, he becomes obligated in the second day of Purim. Which means that he should fulfill all the mitzvahs of Purim, Kriyas Megillah, Matanas Lavyeinim, Mishloach Manes, Su'udas Purim, Adelo Yoda, Al Hanisim in, in, in Shemines, in Benching, once again a second time, with exception to Brachas over Megillah reading. Since it's a Machlekes, one does not say a bracha over the Megillah reading. However, he's obligated Luchumr to keep a second day of Purim in Jerusalem. This applies for both men and women. So this is someone that traveled on Thursday with intent to remain there until fr- after Friday morning, past the lois. If, however, this individual was just traveling for the night and planned on being back home in his Yudala town outside of Jerusalem before morning, then he was not obligated at all to celebrate once again the mitzvahs on the 15th. In the case that this individual decided to travel to Jerusalem, not on Thursday, the 14th, but before then, such as the 13th or the night of the 14th, in a case that he was already in Jerusalem by daybreak of the 14th, meaning practically traveled Wednesday or Wednesday night, and he was in Jerusalem when Thursday morning, then if his intentions were to remain in Jerusalem until a light of the 15th, which is meaning until Friday morning he plans to stay in Jerusalem, then he becomes like a Jerusalemite and only celebrates Purim on the 15th. If, however, this individual intends on leaving Jerusalem before Friday morning, then he's obligated to celebrate Purim on the 14th, even while he's still in Jerusalem. And therefore, he would have to hear Megillah, find a Megillah reading on the 14th in Yerushalayim, and fulfill all the mitzvahs on the 14th. Now let's deal with the opposite case. A Jerusalem resident that is traveling to celebrate Purim on Wednesday night on the 14th, because in Jerusalem it's not yet Purim. He has to wait another day till Thursday night, till the 15th. So many Jerusalemites travel on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, the 14th, to Purim parties. If this individual that traveled had intent to remain outside Jerusalem for his party, past the Lais HaShachar of Thursday morning, which is the 14th, then he actually becomes obligated in Purim on the 14th, even though he is a Jerusalem resident. Even if he made plans, and he had all the intentions of celebrating Purim only on Friday, he would be obligated to celebrate Purim on Thursday because he intended and did so and woke up in outside Jerusalem on the day of the Purim celebration there, which is the 14th. So therefore, the only way to avoid being chayiv to celebrate Purim on the 14th, if you're a Jerusalem resident, and plan on leaving Jerusalem to a Purim party, etc., is to have in mind 
to be back in Jerusalem before Alei Sashachar of Thursday morning. In the situation that the individual had in mind to be back before Alei Sashachar, and for whatever reason he missed his ride, he couldn't make it, he's not obligated on the 14th. It only, it only applies if he actually had in mind to remain there. As in all cases, we follow the intention at the time of travel. In the event that he had in mind to remain past the lice, and therefore, according to Allah, he celebrates Purim on the 14th, and then returns to Jerusalem on Thursday, then he has to celebrate once again in Jerusalem on the 15th Lechumra. So once again, he does not say a bracha over the Megillah reading. In the event that one remained in Jerusalem on the 14th, and planned on celebrating Purim on the 15th, and ended up leaving Jerusalem on the 15th, Thursday night, before daybreak of Friday, then according to some Paiskim, he has just lost Purim. Meaning, he didn't celebrate the 14th because he was a Jerusalemite. He can't celebrate the 15th because he's not in Jerusalem. He didn't wake up there. The Mice said this is this period of Paiskim, and therefore a person should avoid this at all costs. In the event that one is celebrating the second day, Lechumra, he may not read the Megillah with a bracha for other people. Therefore, those that became obligated in celebrating Purim on the 14th outside of Jerusalem, whether they are an out-of-Jerusalem resident or whether they are a Jerusalem resident that travel with intent to remain there past the morning, then when they're in Jerusalem, they cannot read for other people with a bracha. In fact, they shouldn't read for other people at all because it's a question whether they can be them. And therefore, if someone else is available, another person who's a Jerusalem resident and was only high of Jerusalem should read for, for them on their behalf. The same applies in the opposite case, the one who's celebrating Purim on the 15th, and he's a Jerusalem resident, he cannot read Megillah L'Chathchilah for others that are celebrating on the 14th.